Want to know what your dog is thinking? Have a challenging dog behavior you need help with? The Dish on Dogs is your source for all your canine questions. Improve your relationship with your dog and deepen your understanding of your furry friend right here on the Dish on Dogs. Welcome to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould, mayor of Houndstown, USA. Houndstown, USA is, of course, home to the happiest dogs on earth. Since our inception over 20 years ago, we have cared for over one and a half million dogs. I think we're approaching two million. Joining me today is the always lovely, always passionate, sometimes recalcitrant, very frequently truculent, <laughs> Jackie Bondanzer. Welcome to the show. God, I, I, I'm going to be changing that intro. Who's our producer? Right. We'll prove that intro. Corey Packer. Yeah. And I always yeah. wanted to ask that, that, that he's over there. I always wanted to ask this one question. <laughs> what? If Corey Packer picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Corey Packer picked? That's the only question I've always wanted to ask Corey. Oh so now I got that out of my way. I don't have to do that, by the way. So, all right. If you stop being truculent and recalcitrant, it won't be part of the introduction. Oh, oh I see. Okay. okay. I got to come up with an intro for you then. Well, that that's fine. your personality. Uh, I've been to called it. a buffoon. Does anyone have any uh, suggestions uh, out there? I, I'm sure a couple people might have a few. Right. Well, in my previous career on, on broadcasting, was really, I, but the first person said I was just a plain old oh, buffoon. buffoon. Yeah, a buffoon. <laughs> and I carried that label with me with great honor and oh, affection because I always judge people. Uh, my, the, who talks about me by who they are. Anyway, let's not digress. We're supposed to be talking about dogs, right? That's yes. what this show is all about. The yes. dish on dogs. Dish on dogs. Um, all right. So we've talked. This is another episode. I like it to be kind of enlightening. We always talk about this as being our opinions. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of science based in this. It's from us uh, observing one and, or supervising, I should say, one and a half million dogs. Me studying Dogs, when you say studies, again, these are all human words. And humans, we talk about how they like to complicate things with sophisticated language. And it's wonderful. It's a great form of communication. However, dogs are simple. And we, we, we get away from that. So today we've talked about all kinds of things. Don't look, talk, or touch. How to detach from your dog emotionally and physically. We talked in the past about that. So the dish on dogs today, Jackie, this episode, what will we be talking about? Do you know or are you asking I'm asking. asking. Me? You're going to ask you know. me. I can I right. I'm not sure you know. I, okay, we're going to be talking today about changes in the environment and how changes in the environment affect your dog. Um, yes. here in New York, we have four seasons. Um mm -hmm. so as the seasons change and in with each season comes slight and sometimes overt changes that we notice in our dog's behavior. Yeah. So we want to talk about that. Um, and I think other elements in the environment too, not just related to weather. Right. So here it is again, your human brain has gone to four seasons, which is good. So again, changes of in the environment. Let's talk about mammals, you and I and our dogs. What affects the changes what affects their behavior? What affects our behavior? So when you talk about the change of season, that is overt. That's dramatic. I'm talking about the change in room temperature. So let's just say this. In my most recent seminar, I talked to people and said, what is a comfortable temperature for you as a human in your home? Re remember, we don't have fur, right? I have a, I've, I've let, you know, we don't have fur to protect our, our skin and our body temperature. Dogs do for the most part. So the a question I ask people is, what's a comfortable room temperature? And I'll ask you that question. What's a comfortable room temperature? For me, probably 67 or so, right. 68. So, exactly. So most people will say 68. So just think of temperature mm -hmm. on a spectrum from zero degrees to 110 degrees. Just think of that, right? Because there's Alaska, it's zero degrees. And in Las Vegas today, it's probably 117 degrees. I don't know. The, the point is there's a huge spectrum. But not that huge in the universe, right? The sun is so, so the point is is a spectrum of heat. And we've defined this, you're gonna be comfortable at sixty-eight degrees. What happened if the temperature rose in this room seven degrees now and it was now seventy-five degrees? What would you do? Well it'll probably become too hot and uncomfortable. What would you do? I would try to look for ways to 
Right. Probably take your jacket off. Yeah. Probably take your fleece off, assuming you have clothes underneath that. Right. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't for other reasons. But but you would take your fleece off to, to adjust. <laughs> I'm going Most someplace. Most people wear clothes underneath their outer Most garments. people, thank you. <laughs> Most people wear clothes. Most dogs do not wear clothes. So okay. this is where we're going with All this. All right, let's get there. So, okay, so you said 75 degrees, you'd start disrobing to make yourself more comfortable. <laughs> What if I didn't say that? Actually. I asked I you said what I was going to change. I would look for ways to change the temperature, but okay, right. So sure. you ter- right exactly. So you would open it. Good. And again, I'm obviously I'm teasing, but you would ch- that little seven degree shift would make you the human change, do something to adjust the temperature. Conversely, if the temperature dropped to seven degrees and it was sixty degrees, what would you do? I guess we'll look for another fleece to put on. Exactly, right. So we're talking about a range of temperature of 8 degrees, give or take in any direction, from your comfort zone. Okay, Your yes. comfort zone. Now let's think about the poor dog. Let's talk about this poor St. Bernard that lives in my house. And I like the temperature, or you like the temperature to be 68 degrees, but he wants the temperature to be 30, 40 degrees. That's true, yep. So that would you say that affects him? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't you talk about him a little bit? So we have a St. Bernard, right? Yep. Doesn't he sleep in the snow? Yeah. Well, so in, yeah, in our house, and I've noticed this, you know, starting a couple years back, especially in the warmer months. Mm -hmm. Um, And even in the colder, maybe it's even more in the colder months when we have the heat at, you know, 67, 68. It's way too hot for him. So right. he seeks out um, the coldest right. areas of the house, which in our house is right in front of the front door because it's got right. a little bit of a draft. If it's still too hot for him in that location, then he will start to get anxious. He paces. He starts panting. So we started in in our house leaving, if it's mm. warm enough or cool enough, leaving the sliding glass door open so that he can go right. in and out. Right. In, in in the kitchen onto the deck. Right. And lo and behold, he would always choose to go outside and literally sleep on top of the snow and ice. Right. And for him, that's his comfort right. zone. Right. So again, and he's a dog. I use him because he's a graphic example. But most dogs, if you have a long-coated dog, a husky, a German shepherd, oh, a Labrador. Labrador, get it? Labrador up in the... Where the hell is Labrador? It's up in the... North, where is that? Not no wheat... No, Labrador up in Iceland it's freezing up the point of the matter is it's a Labrador retriever it's freezing and they jump in freezing cold water and retrieve ducks or whatever the hell they're retrieving the point of the matter is we live in a very controlled environment that affects us because we're selfish so we don't think of the St. Bernard that needs to be out in 30 degree weather so my poor dog ends up sleeping in front of the freezer on cold tile you could buy him the best bed you can buy a career, whatever the hell they are, he won't sleep on it. He wants to sleep on cold tile. Right, and I think our human brain, especially when it comes to temperature, and of course there are considerations and concerns. We, we not certainly not saying you should leave your dog out in the snow, <clears throat> or conversely in hot heat, you know, hot humid temperatures. Right. But but I think the point is that you need to understand what the dog's right. needs are. Um, and you know, as humans, we think that, you know, dogs shouldn't be out in the cold and they need jackets and raincoats and right. So when you say that you preface that you certainly aren't suggesting that in, in a way that it's almost would be abusive. But again, I would argue in Alaskan Malamute that it's not, it's, it's not a special dog. It's not a New York dog. It's not a Floridian dog. It's an Alaskan Malamute, very closely tied to its wolf ancestors in the tundra. So I'm, my, I'm saying is you'd be surprised the dog would probably do just fine outside providing Right. Well, the colder temperatures, I think, are yeah. less of a concern right. than right. the heat, the, the high heat. heat is because bad, right. Because dogs, certain, certain dogs cannot be out in the heat or it, the heat affects right. them more negatively than the cold weather. Right. But the point is, as humans, we think the dog shouldn't be outside in the right. cold. And that's probably counterintuitive for a lot of right. dogs. They want to be in right. the cold right. weather. They right. have fur. Right. They have very thick skin. Um, and they're, they, they, you know, they thrive in, you know, being outside in the cold. Right. right. So we're projecting again. And I, I, I understand. I don't want to beat this to death. But 
again, you, a polar bears swim in. If you go just look at nature today, it's it's you go look at seagulls. They don't need what we think they need. Uh, so polar bears love freezing cold water. Alligators need to be in a dirty, nasty old swamp. And when we start to project human needs on them and say, let's take an alligator up to Alaska, it would die. And conversely, the polar bear in Florida would die. Um, so, and then the other part of, of, of our, where you're talking about the environment, I'm not talking about big things. I'm talking about little things. How about in the cold weather, carbon monoxide on the ground? We are oblivious to carbon monoxide. So in, I used cold weather because we know gas stays lower to the ground in cold weather. So all our cars are selfishly designed for us. So we don't get hit in the face with carbon monoxide. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> it's right at the dog's level. Right. But it's right hitting the dog in the face. You can't see carbon monoxide, but dogs are walking through it every minute of the day. Yeah. So if you're wondering, I get this quite a bit, my dog won't jump in the back of my SUV anymore. And they're like, he did it all summer because now you're starting your car. <laughs> so again, this is animal behavior that is associated with humans that are oblivious. This doesn't mean people are, are mean, but you're not realizing when you're starting your car and you're dragging your dog, carbon monoxide doesn't exist in the wild. And I think that's what I really wanted to focus this episode. What do dogs understand completely? They understand trees. They understand dirt. They understand stone. They understand vegetation. They understand water to some degree, but young puppies don't even understand water because what is water sometimes? There's a reflection of themselves, and they don't understand what that is. But puppies in the wild learn water, and they're very careful where they put their pads. Their pads are what they navigate the world with. Dogs are very sure-footed, and they can navigate very simply. Look at your dogs at nighttime. You want, I, I know people that leave the lights on for the dog so it can see around the house. Obviously ludicrous. Right, Jackie? Well, I guess the dog, dogs have night vision. Dogs have night vision, Jackie. Huh. Yeah, so that's another incredible thing. I they, didn't know that. Oh, actually. yeah, yeah. Well, well does this, I think this, this kind of feeds into also this concept of putting not only jackets on dogs, but like boots and booties it's, and... It's idiotic. So you're saying that dogs need their to feel their feet and their pads right. to oh, navigate absolutely. navigate the world. Yes, absolutely, because it's unnatural. To just think of it. Think right. of, think of dogs. If you see wild dogs run, they don't fall off mountaintops. They don't fall off cliffs. They're actually pretty remarkable. They're sure-footed and they navigate by taking putting covering their pads. That's why they you know when dogs go to the vet, uh, not the vet, the groomer. And you go touch a dog's pe- paws or pads. Right, they never like it. They don't yeah. because it's unnatural. Where it's their foot is in a trap now. Right. Most humans don't. I guess you've like pedicures and manicures. You've learned to accept that. But most people, when somebody grabs my foot, my natural reaction is to pull it away. So that's again of animal behavior, not a human or dog. It's animal. So when when we hear about oh my dog hates going to the groomer, yeah, because you're holding its pads, its paws that it uses. It's a very important part, part of their navigation system. Right. Their pads, they very delicately move around, as you'll see. Uh, I talk about, you know, you walking your dog on uh, asphalt and then trying to, some dogs will, will object to putting their pad on a manhole cover because it's a different temperature. So it's, or, and it's different texture and temperature. So my point is these are natural things for dogs. We put boots on, we put snorkel jackets on, we put gloves on. What's and a snorkel jacket? A snorkel jacket. <laughs> I don't know. It's like that thing with a big hood. It's called hoodies now. Back oh, in the, okay. In my, but my point is it's all about human projection. And right. I think, but, but when I get to the new, I'm talking about subtle changes in the environment. You started talking about the summer, winter, and of course dogs need a little time to adapt to all that. You can't take a dog, a short-coated, I mean, and again, all these breeds of dogs that we see, these domestic dogs, are just mutations of a wolf. And that's what's important to understand. A wolf, a Malamute, uh, a, a Siberian Husky, 
Yeah, they are not going to do that well in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Right, in a hotter Because hotter that's climate. not their natural environment. Right. So, so we transport them there. Then we start to do, make mu- these mutations into designer dogs. And there was a practical reason, obviously, to domesticate dogs and breed them for certain things, to pull wagons, to hunt, to, to do all kinds of things. So there was a practical reason our forefathers started to breed dogs for herding animals. They're great. They're magnificent. They're fascinating. But we've done it for selfish reasons, right? right? You we've wanna... gone kind of overboard with it. Oh, my God. I don't think we really provide a, a, like a natural element for no. a dog. And what's sad to me, truly sad to me, as I said, just like I have a, a, a model of a human brain, if you take a dog brain, obviously their sizes might be a little different, but they're identical. You could never, uh, you could never determine by by doing an autopsy of a human brain or neck crops, what that breed is or anything. Just like you can't, there's no gay brains, there's no African American brains, there's no Muslim brains. A human brain is a human brain. Gabish. Okay. All right. So the point of the matter is that humans just don't mess with your dogs. Don't mess. Here's what I'd say. Don't mess with animals, period. You know, I, I saw an ad on the on TV where people are going down to like the Caribbean to go swim with dolphins and the kids. Oh, that li- drives me crazy. Their little yeah. bratty kids want to pet dolphins. I Leave know. the dolphins alone. They don't want to mess with you. They don't want to be pet by your kid. Trust me. <laughs> You're toxic. If you go pet dolphins, go to these aquariums, sea world, it's, it's toxic. Let these animals be. Observe nature for sure. Get in the habit of observing nature. Now, I actually literally pull over because we live in this world now that there is no nature. I pull over when I see a flock of birds. I think flocks of birds are fascinating to me, how they navigate, and it's just amazing to me. Their navigation systems are, their navigation birds, we talk about bird brains, right? I have a couple. Uh, so we talk about bird brains. Think of the sophisticated navigation. They make the United States Air Force look like a bunch of morons. Yeah. Birds. Right. A flock of birds. Watch them the next time. Go to the beach and watch things. Don't engage with them. You don't, don't pet lions, all right? If you pet a lion and you get eaten, the poor lion gets put to sleep. This is what pisses me off. You ever see these shows where the people think they're one with nature? They're, They're playing with bears and they're playing with lions. Leave them alone. You'll learn a lot more by sitting back, do what I do, smoke a cigar or smoke whatever the hell you smoke. And sometimes, depending on what you smoke, it may make the experience right. even more fascinating. <laughs> it may make more sense it makes to more, you. Well, it makes more fascinating. <laughs> go to, and you can go to Central Park and do this. You don't have to go book a trip into the Amazon. Right. Go to Central Park, sit on a bench, and watch how animals and humans interact. And you'll see how crazy. You'll see a squirrel come out of a tree. You'll see some b- pigeons. You'll see dogs. You'll see all this fascinating. It's a it's a ballet of nature. So I think the the rest of we're talking about the rest of, rest of nature: birds, squirrels, you know, things that we find we see every day. Deer. We don't even see they're, them. They're 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 kind of allowed to still interact in their natural habitat, Absolutely. whereas dogs are not right so if you go to central park and sit on a bench you're going to see like you said squirrels and birds and hey. whatever whatever else but you're going to see dogs walking by on a leash Tethered. attached to yeah. a, a, a person right. in a potentially in a jacket and boots so right. what's wrong just ask yourself kind of what's yeah. wrong with this picture right, right. and exactly. what is the dog what does the dog wish he was doing the dog Thank wishes you. he could participate in that natural world, probably to right. some degree. Right. So let's talk about how people can bring that opportunity a little yeah. bit into their Well, home. right. So that's a great analogy. As I say, the more I talk to you, the more fascinated I am by you and your ability to describe what I'm thinking. All right. So, right. so I look at this. Here's the way I see things. And my mind is not normal, as you know. Oh, I well, see. we are all aware. Right, right. But very simple. Very simple. I see when a person is walking a dog on a leash, I see a child with leg shackles and handcuffs on. That's what I see. That's what I see. If I see a dog in a bag and some selfish, entitled human being has got a dog crammed into a bag and then they shove it under the seat of the Southwest Airlines and they think they're just wonderful. 
No, so dogs, I don't even like to see dogs in zoos. Obviously, they have to be, but I don't like that. When, when have you seen a dog in a zoo? Not a dog. Or whatever, wolves. I'm oh, saying you mean animals you mean, in general. Yeah, of course. But, right. Right. So, right. So in Central Park, you see what you described, this beautiful natural uh, ballet. Birds, I think, they must look down. Who's cooler than a bird? They look down and see what assholes we are, and they can always fly away. Right. So when there's a natural disaster, earthquakes, hurricanes, they're like, I'm right. out of here. They're gone. They fly away. They don't get, you don't see birds getting like blown around. Stressed out. <laughs> Stressed out. They come down. They eat probably gourmet food, right? They come down. They go to the back dumpster of old fields and take out my leftover. They live a great life. So the point of the matter is, when you smoke what I smoke, <laughs> and it's a cigar, a cigar, uh, sure, right? Uh, you smoke this stuff. No, no. So <laughs> s- sit down on a park bench and leave. F- just watch nature. Watch the humans. And, and then you'll have a better appreciation on how toxic we sometimes, unintentionally, and I tease it's a lot. It's unintentional. It's unintentional. Yeah. My, uh, right. So, and if you want to incorporate this into your dog's life, um, you know, you can bring your dog into, I mean, even if you just have a backyard, just let him go and run around and disengage, exactly. let him sniff and pee and, and do all the things that he wants to do. Thank you. Um, they want to sniff and lick piss. Yeah. Let them do it. Right. Let them do it. Right. All right. If we wrapping this up, because I'm we getting aggravated again. Yeah, I know. Because I want to talk it's... about emotional service and uh, right. all That's this not other for crazy. This episode, though, all right. So we'll talk about that another time. Nutty, Jackie. The all more right. I sit here in this con, in this bubble, the safe place, this crying room <laughs> that we're in, it gets me nutty. Okay. Let's all go. Right. Time so to say sign goodbye. Off. Tell people how to tell people how to uh-huh. do something here. All right. Let's. Uh, okay. We'll see everybody next time. Check us out on houndsoundusa.com. And uh, you can find us on Facebook on the Dish on Dogs podcast uh, and all our traditional podcast platforms. We'll see everybody next time. Rawr. What? No question. Oh, oh I forgot about the question. All right.